Hey, construction legends. So today we're going to talk about four construction management hacks that you guys need to know to have better cash flow on your projects and to essentially make more money. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Kieran Brennan. I'm CEO of a company called Quantum Contract Solutions. The reason we make these videos and the podcast and all of the content, short form content that we have is to allow you to get more skills, more contractual skills, more commercial skills so that you can sign better contracts. You can ultimately have better cash flow. You can make more money on your construction projects because so many construction companies go out of business every single year and we don't want you to be one of them. So here we go. One very good tip when you're bidding for work is you there's always an opportunity to submit an alternative bid. Now, with most of these tips, one of the, the key things that you need to consider is that cash flow is absolute king on construction projects. So if you can be the type of company that has really good cash flow on your construction projects, you're going to be able to do so much better because you can, you're not going to have to worry about paying your guys. You're not going to worry about paying for materials or taking on huge finance and uh, the costs associated with the huge finance. Um, so if you can structure your deals to have better cash flow, it's going to make a massive difference. So a lot of these tips are you know with, with that in mind okay so the first thing is the alternative bid when you're bidding for work so there is always generally an option to submit an alternative bid and normally they're talking about it from a technical point of view so you know they're talking about okay well if you can see uh, doing the work differently and then can you please advise us and then we will consider that so that's typically what they're looking for from an alternative bid but you can also do an alter alternative bid from how you're positioning the work differently and so what we've had a lot of success with in the business is trying to negotiate an upfront payment okay so what you would have to do is you submit an alternative bid and it's just a, a difference in the commercial alternative so you'd still submit your technically priced bid as normal and then you'd have two commercial price bids and then one is the regular one and one is the alternative price okay so that's how, that's the logistics of how you actually do it and so with the alternative price you say you know the what we we're still offering the same price as the other tender or the other bid except what we're looking for instead is we're looking for x amount of an upfront payment and like a, a reasonable amount upfront and explain why you want it and it's pretty easy to explain why an upfront payment is beneficial to both parties in, in covid at the moment you can just say to them hey we want an upfront payment because it's really hard to get people. It's really hard to get materials. If we can get that upfront payment, it allows us to get on the front foot, get all of the people, because that's the biggest risk at the moment in the market, getting the people, getting the materials locked in. We can get that locked in for you straight away. And obviously that's going to be beneficial to you guys because we're going to be able to deliver the service in exchange for that prepayment, right? So as soon as we sign a contract, we're going to invoice against against that line item where you're going to pay us that money. What's going to let that's going to allow us to do is obviously get those people, get the materials locked in. And in exchange for that, we'll give you 5% discount in the total contract value. So it's a win-win for them, right? People are going to get the materials, going to get the people, and they're going to get a 5% discount on the price. You would um, have better cash flow and you would be confident that you could make up that 5% in margin in the post award via changes um, and delays and that sort of thing, right? That's what the big, big construction companies do. They win projects at a loss. So they go way, they go into the red knowing that they're going to make up it in post award. So that's how to approach it from uh, from that point of view. It's very, very effective. The next thing is oftentimes you, um, you'd be asked to, to pr present a lump sum, all right? And so lump sums, oftentimes you'll just be, you'll have milestones that you get paid for and they won't, you won't actually break down all of your rates. Okay, and that's typically how that happens. So what a really good thing to do is when you've gotten to the stage of being awarded the contract, they're, they're going, yeah, we're going with you. We're happy with your prices. Let's move forward. You can say, okay, brilliant. What I'd like to do is just to make it easier for both parties in the post award phase is give you a schedule of rates that if you ever ask us to do any change orders or additional work or whatever happens to be we have all of the prices of all our people there locked in it's ready to go and it makes things very easy we don't have to negotiate things we can get that stuff done really really quickly without any you know arguments over costs how does that sound yeah that sounds great sounds like a great idea what you can do is you can make those rates a little bit you can bump those rates up so you've got a healthy margin 
because they're not going to use it as an analysis to you know look at your rates versus the other people's rates okay so because you're later in the piece they'll just hopefully just slip that into the contract and now every time you do a very uh, change order you're going to make a lot of margin on the change order and if you add it to the the first point and, he, and now you have the second uh, the, the second uh, tip that I've given you that's going to make a huge difference to your profitability. Now, the next thing is, have you ever heard of Pavlov's dog? So Pavlov's dog was the ringing of the bell for the dog uh, whenever he had food. And then essentially they rang it without food and he started, you know, drooling because he thought food was coming. So Pavlov's dog, incidentally, I did this to my father one time where he loves these, you know, those lint balls. He loves the coconut lint balls. And so at Christmas time, I came home and I was like, oh, that's can you get us a beer or whatever you know or, or a, a guinness and he's like yeah yeah and I, I trade him for this and then i had my my little sister was doing it as well this is when we're a little bit younger and it was like he loved the chocolate and so we basically we were trying to get train him into it until our mother found out what we were doing she's like stop that um, so quite funny but to reflect that into construction what we what you need to do is you need to pavlov's dog your client in that as the day after that they don't pay you on time so say they need to pay you by a certain day even if it's one day late you just kick up things straight away oh well you know we haven't got paid blah 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 we're supposed to be paid here blah 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 that first time they didn't pay you on time bang right in and then they're like okay right they're the type of company they're going to kick off every single time that that we don't pay them on time we've got to make sure that we pay them and do and then you train them into paying you on time because they don't want to have this confrontation every single time if you're nice about the whole thing you know they're just ah well, they're they're fine they don't care if we don't pay you on time and yada 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 so you gotta be bang straight in blah 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 you can go to the accounts person it doesn't have to be your relationship and just let them know that you're not going to be the type of company that accepts late payments and then they will pay you on time okay and the last thing is something to a uh, general concept for post-award phase is the squeaky wheel gets the oil. Not following up, not chasing payment, not chasing the status of change orders, not chasing the status of extensions of time or where you're moving with regards to payment is, in my opinion, your own fault, right? Because they have typically bigger organizations, they got loads of red tape and people just move when they get prodded. So make it part of your process to prod people. The squeaky wheel gets the oil. If you want to get paid, you go, where's my change order? Where's my change order? Have like, you know, people on your team who, who are in charge of doing this to poke them to make sure that they're getting paid. That's the stuff that makes the difference. That's how you, you get paid. Okay, so let's recap. You got the alternative bid where you're looking for uh, money up front. It's going to help your cash flow in exchange for a certain percentage discount. Okay, so it's attractive to them. And um, next thing is once you get the, 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 the project, offer to give them rates to make the change orders and, and that sort of stuff much easier. They should have a little bit of higher margin. So that'll be a way to get your margin back and make more money on that post award phase. Second thing is Pavlov's dog. Um, oh, so third thing is Pavlov's dog for payment. Make sure that you kick up a stink as soon as they don't pay you on time. So they know that you're, you're going to do that every time and then they'll just pay you when they're supposed to pay you. And then the squeaky wheel gets the oil. Make sure that with anything you're chasing change orders that you know you're constantly doing it because that will prod them into action and it'll mean that you'll get paid quicker you get very uh, change orders and extension signs approved quicker which you get paid quicker which means your cash flow will be better and that's what we want so those four things will make a big difference implement them and i'll chat to you again